Thanks for tuning into the Boston Roll channel. Liking the video and subscribing to the channel are free and easy for you, and they help me out a lot. If you want to go further with your support, Patreon and YouTube membership offer access to the Boston Roll Discord community, early access to lists, written content, things like that. You can have me play your deck on the channel, and the highest tiers come with individual coaching sessions. If you use YouTube membership, you also get sweet badges and emotes integrated here into YouTube. You can support the channel while you shop at tcgplayer.com by using my affiliate link in the video description. And you can play any deck anytime by using a cardhoarder.com loan account on Magic Online. If you want to wear your support, check out the merch store. And of course, thanks for being here. Now let's go play some Magic. Welcome to a very exciting and very different Boston Roll video. I have been asked by Patreon subscriber Nagledak to feature the pre-modern format. I don't normally feature non-sanctioned formats. I'm usually in the pocket of Modern Legacy Vintage, but... This has been something that's been requested to me a number of times, and Nagledeck came up with a cool enough model to make it happen. Pre-modern, if you're not familiar, is a format that exists between old school and modern. This is premodernmagic.com if you want information about this. The legal sets are 4th edition through Scourge, and the ban list knocks out the most egregious of things that are legal in the format. Here those are. If you want to check out the pre-modern format, premodernmagic.com is a great resource for that. I've never played this format before. I am not particularly invested in it. I have a lot of friends who like it, people whose minions I trust, but I have never jumped into it before. The matches you're going to see today are the first matches I've ever played in pre-modern. Let's see what I'm doing. What we're doing here today is I have arranged for an opponent, who we will meet shortly, who has five pre-modern decks prepared and I have five pre-modern decks prepared and we're going to play one match with each of our decks we're going to random the five matches and we're going to feature 10 of pre-modern's premier decks the decks I'm playing today are mono green elves this is big mana big action tops off at Kamal Fist of Kroza we didn't have Crater Hoof Behemoth back in 1995 or 2003 that is the range of the format 95 to 2003 just lots of elves and try to go big before they kill all your creatures pretty straightforward deck i got mud this is mono brown artifacts another big mana deck goes nutty with masticore and attacking with karn silver golem and all your other artifacts lots of creature lands in this one as well this Kind of resembles existing legacy decks. So does pre the elf deck, actually. Here's one that does not resemble a legacy deck because the core engine is banned. This is Rex Sir, named after Survival of the Fittest and Recurring Nightmare. It's a toolbox deck where you can find whatever creatures you want with survival and loop them in and out of play with Recurring Nightmare. It's sort of a creature-based control deck. The next one is Terrageddon. This uses Terravore. 3-3, three, three, or 3 mana Lurgoyf with Trample. Terravore's power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands in all graveyards. This is an absolute dump truck of a creature, and this deck is built to fill the graveyard with lands. We got Wasteland, Mox Diamond, Fetch Lands, Armageddon as a 3 of. We're coming in hot on this one. And my final deck. You know I wouldn't play pre-modern without trying this one. This is Blue-White Standstill. Standstill deck. Decree of Justice is our original Shark Typhoon. Controlling the board with Wrath of God, Swords to Plowshares. Got some creature lands to beat down with. All of these decks are absolutely beautiful showcases of what could happen in the medium old era of magic. Not quite vintage, but way before modern. This is what was going on in the format. One thing I really wanted to feature in this league, in addition to the play patterns, is the aesthetic of pre-modern, which is one of the most charming things about it. I spent a lot of time and a non-zero amount of money getting these decks to be as old border, pre-modern aesthetic as they could. The cards that are not old border are ones that don't exist on Magic Online and old border. I got every single thing done that could be done and for the things that weren't done, like Wrath of God, I just chose the most iconic art that was available. Notable things that are not on Magic Online, Ice Age. So the Ice Age Painlands, you have to go Corset. 
The Apocalypse Pain Lands are on Magic Online, so we got some Land War Waste in one of the deck. Wrath of God is not in Alpha Art. Birds of Paradise is not in Alpha Art. But for the most part, we could do this. The aesthetics of this format are absolutely gorgeous, featuring a lot of nostalgia hits for me. I don't know if ev every one of you was playing at this point, but I was. I remember seeing these cards looking like this in packs, and oh, it makes me so happy to see it again. We're going to random up these matchups, and we're going to go meet our opponent for the day, and then we're going to jump in. See you soon. What's up? Welcome to the pre-modern challenge. I'm Bosch and Roll. I'm here with... I'm F. Fabluche, also known as Francisco. Francisco and I are battling off pre-modern today. One of my Patreon subscribers, Nagledak, put up $500 to make this happen. Like, wanted to see a $500 battle of pre-modern. And we're doing that. Uh, $100 a match in a format that I have not really played at least not as a format. I've played a lot of these decks when they were just called Extended or Standard. Uh, I did a bit of that, but uh, I have not played this specifically against other pre-modern decks. I, I know you have a little bit, like I've done a little bit of research. I've watched some videos. I have friends who play the format, but uh, in general, I'm flying by the seat of my pants here and I can't wait because these decks look awesome. Every single one of these decks is an absolute delight. I cannot wait to play any of this. Uh, personally, I have a little bit of pre-modern experience, but all of my experience has been super casual. Like when I started playing the, back in Odyssey, uh, my brother and I, we had like a bunch of these cards and then I took a long break. And when I started things up, you know, nostalgia always hits. So as soon as I heard that pre-modern was a thing, I'm like, wait, wait, wait a second. Do you mean that I can get back all my cards from back then? And like I built a gauntlet because cards that I could not afford at all back then are like two bucks right now. So um, I have like a bunch of these decks and every matchup is just so fun. Like it's just magic like the old days. No planes walkers to worry about. Um, you, you can have like all of these cards that are sweet, but not good enough to break into the formats that they're actually legal in. Uh, so we're going to be casting some Vendettas, we're going to be casting some uh, maybe Spirit Mongers, we're going to be casting some Blastoderms, and ooh, we, we have some spicy ones for, yeah. for you today. I am excited about those cards you just named because uh, The Rock is one of the decks you have, the classic mm -hmm. The Rock black-green deck. I'm excited about that. Uh, just real quick, I'm playing Elves, Standstill, Mud, Rexer and Terrageddon today. What are your oh, decks? Yeah. I'm going to be playing uh, The Rock, as you just said. I'm going to be playing Blue Black Stifle Knot. Uh, we're going to be playing Sly. Yes. Mono Red Goblins. And probably my single favorite, Aluren. Oh, a, a real combo deck in the mix there. Big fan. And... Yeah, and, and that's that's one thing that I want to say. Like The beautiful thing about this format is that have prison decks in the format like it's it's actually a lot more diverse than you would expect uh, for a format that does not really get any new cards ever the the amount of decks that are available it's incredible and uh, the format is actually pretty uh, diverse and uh, dynamic as well like it changes a fair amount like new archetypes get uh, just appear out of nowhere every now and then yes it's very cool i'm very excited about all these matchups and we decided that we're just going to queue into each other like as a tournament. Uh, we're, I know what your five decks are. You know what my five decks are. But we didn't preset the matchups. We didn't try to pair them to be interesting. We didn't like set up anything. We're just going to queue into each other five times. And until the last round where we have process of elimination, we won't know what the matchup is till it's in front of us, which... I mean, knowing what's in your stable, uh, your first land drop, I could probably figure out what your deck is, but... That's how we decided to randomize it, just not tell each other what we're going to bring. So it's not true random, but I mean, we're, we didn't plan for any of this. Yeah, like if you were familiar with the format, that's kind of how it would play out anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, like if, you, if you're very familiar with how the pre-modern format and the metagame looks like, you would know, okay, if my opponent goes turn one, uh, you know, verse of paradise, there's like limited amount of decks that your opponent could be playing if they do that and obviously if they go turn one lucky you're you're pretty certain of what they're happening over there <laughs> so i wonder what this um, so, is so yeah exactly so if, that's a nice tech in the rock you know uh but it's one of those things where 
it you kind of tried to recreate the the actual experience of playing a tournament if if you if you were to. Yes, this is a snapshot of a very specific period of magic. We don't have Power 9. We don't have anything like that. We don't have Planeswalkers like you mentioned. We don't have anything like that. This is from 1995 to 2003. The, the card pool is sealed and locked. There will not be more cards in it. It's all just what you want to innovate with the cards that exist. And there's a lot of decks that we're not featuring here. We tried to pick 10 of the most popular according to premodernmagic.com. Uh, all of my lists are pulled directly from that site and shout out to them. Really cool resource there. It, they made it very mm -hmm. easy for me to figure out decks and what even the rules of the format were coming from basically zero and shout out to them. Uh, I'll have them linked in my video description, of course. Yeah, I know. And the, the Primora community is pretty fantastic. Like everybody is like super into the format and they, they like to do stuff. And one thing that I wanted to uh, to say is that it's very purposely, like the idea of the format is very purposely try to make it not legacy. Because, you know, that would be like a pretty easy thing. You know, if you have Force of Will, uh, every blue deck is going to be playing four copies of Force of Will. That's just a thing that's right. going to happen. So uh, there's a very uh, specific curated, curated ban list where Brainstorm's not in the format, uh, Force of Will is not in the format, and Tomb is not in the format. So a bunch of cards that you would expect to be, you know, absolute you know, pillars of the format and much better than everything else are not legal. And this is very, very important because uh, specifically of, you know, what we're trying to do here, we're trying to create a very distinct format. And I think that they did a very good job at, at doing that. Yeah, th this is definitely its own thing. Just looking at the card pool and the decks, I feel like the play patterns are going to be similar to Pioneer. Uh, like, I think Modern is a more powerful format than Pre-Modern. But Pioneer looks like it's sort of in the same pocket. Like, they have Planeswalkers, we don't. Uh, we have Survival of the Fittest, they don't. So, like, obviously different <laughs> cards, different engines. But, like, I think the uh, you get what you pay for out of your mana. Not a lot of free spells, not a lot of surprise bs uh there's gonna mm -hmm. we're gonna be playing tapping mana and slinging spells back and forth and games are gonna go for a while and i'm excited about yeah. it no and one thing that, that you're saying is is true like it, everything is a little bit more fair you know like everything is like you you don't have to play around the cards that i was saying earlier for sure and uh yeah it's the mana bases are uh limited so you're going to see us uh very likely is have some trouble sometimes to cast our spells, particularly when, you, when we're trying stuff like three or four colors, like I'm doing in, in Alluren, for example. Uh, things may get dicey, but that's in a way part of the appeal of the format to me because it feels like that's what magic was originally about. Like, it, and even more so, like you, the, the original moving and rule was an absolute disaster, right? So, mm -hmm. like, matches were indeed decided by like it, it, it's sort of charming in a way. Yeah. That mana screw is the problem. Like we we have grown so uh, so accustomed to like triumphs and fetch lands and like everything always works. So it's just like jam a bunch of like the most powerful cards legal in the format and just call it a day. You know, like we see this in legacy all the time with control decks. You know, uh, but here it's just you need to be very careful. Like, okay, is it worth it for me to go ahead and try to splash this third color? Like, what am I getting out of the deal versus like the real cost? Of trying to make my mana base work, uh, it's it's a hustle. It's a hustle, but that's part of the the appeal and part of the charm of the format. Yeah, when I was putting my list together, I spent some amount of time laughing to myself that my Rexer <laughs> deck has one Bloodstained Mire in it, and it's just to get <laughs> Swamp or Mountain. Uh, there's no dual lands in the format. Uh, Shock lands weren't out yet. Dual lands are before uh, and. They just fetch basics, and it just the whoever put that list together did the math and found that one bloodstained mire amidst the uh, city of brasses and uh, pain lands and basics was the right call. And I hope that comes up because I'm so excited about it. Yeah, right. for sure, for sure. Is there anything else you want to say before we jump in and play these matches? Mm, the only thing I can say is let's not say anything and let's play some some pre modern. <laughs> Let's do it. I'll see you in the trenches. Let's do it. The first match is upon us. I am choosing Mud. I'm going to go in big in round number one. I kind of am using this strategically because I want to get a feel for what games of this format actually feel like with the deck that requires the least decision points uh, of like 
And what I mean by that is the mud game plan is going to be put big dumb artifacts into play, no matter what my opponent is doing, where like moving around pieces with Rexer it, or like choosing what to counter with Standstill. I'm probably going to play those decks last. Let's see what he decided to start with. I do have all of his lists. Like the point of randoming the the start wasn't really to uh, throw us off. It was just to, so we didn't have to try to curate the matches. But I should figure out pretty quickly what he's doing. This hand looks pretty hefty, but Tanglewire is a monster. I'm going to keep. Let's do it. There's no Ancient Tomb or City of Traitors in this opener. Uh-oh, are we Goblins or Sly? I think this is Sly and not Goblins. Let me check the list real quick. Yeah, Goblin Patrol is in the Sly deck, not in the... Not in the actual Goblin deck. Ooh, we built this city. Uh, I'm pretty stoked that I kept a hand with Double Masticor against the Sly deck. Do you have Price of Progress? That's important to know. Uh, yes, there are three... There's one Price of Progress in the main and then a bunch more in the sideboard. That's scary. Here's Mishra's Factory. I'm going to lead on Factory because it can block next turn. If it... So a Mishra's Factory with Summoning Sickness can block as a 2-2. Two -two. A Mishra's Factory without Summoning Sickness can block as a 3-3. Three -three. Because you can animate it, block, and it can target itself. Paid the one for Patrol, of course. <laughs> you don't not pay the one in this format. Grim Lava Dad. Okay. Uh, that makes my Mishra's Factory worse. Not that it was great anyway. I have some options here. I can... Tangle wire just lock this shit down. But I think that's bad. I'm gonna wasteland and pass. I think Masticore is my top end here. And if I had Ancient Tomb, I think I would play Tangle Wire, but not City of Traders. That's just gonna die shortly thereafter. Here's the list, by the way. Not fair that I referenced this without talking to you all about it. Firebolt, Lightning Bolt. Oh, Incinerate. Incinerate and Lightning Bolt are the instants they could have here. Or he could have. I know my opponent's pronouns in this particular case. Oh, just firing in like this. I am not going to run this into an Incinerate. Just losing a land here is way too high a cost. Another Goblin Patrol. Ooh, Thran Dynamo. Uh, maybe next turn. Or I could... Dynamo into Tangle Wire right now. That's a heater. Okay. We've got a new plan. That's the sound Thran Dynamo makes, by the way. And if you're going to pay for this Goblin Patrol, that's going to cost all of your resources for the turn. And then I can tap Tangle Wire Wasteland Mishra's Factory to Tangle Wire and then play Masticore 3, 4, 5, 6 with the mana to ping something. Wow, Masticor is fucked. It's been a minute since this was a good card. If you're not familiar, 4 mana, 4-4. Four, four. Discard a card or sack it in your upkeep. 2 mana deals 1 to a creature. 2 mana regenerate. Ooh, no lightning bolt in the end step. I like that. Oh, Also of note, in case it would matter ever, um, pre-modern is played with present day Magic the Gathering rules. So damage does not go on the stack. There's nothing like incorrect about the format by playing it on Magic Online. When you're playing with Tangle Wire, make sure that you fade before you tap. Because I only have to tap three things and with the Tangle Wire itself counting in the mix there, it's more like two things. Here's Masticore. Here's a land. Use my floating mana to kill probably Grim Lava Mancer. All right, Masticore is an absolute heater here. I'm probably going to discard a Mishra's Helix to keep it alive next turn. If he does have, okay, it doesn't have double Lightning Bolt or would have played it there. I guess he could go land Lightning Bolt, but he missed his land drop last turn. Yeah, I'm just going to tear it up right now okay so tap things last discard fade oh fading happens 
I have to tap two things, which can be the Tangle Wire and Mistress Factory. I'm trying to decide if it makes sense to like ping things first, and it doesn't. All right, I'm going to discard Mistress Helix and then tap Wasteland and Tangle Wire. Draw for turn Urza's Bobble. Let's take a look. What you got over there? Fire Blast in hand. Okay. So I got to leave up regeneration mana. I'm going to play Blasted Landscape and one, two, three, four. Deal one to Goblin Control and one to other Goblin Patrol. Then, mass then Tangle Wire taps all the permanents next turn. I can even attack with Mistress Factory. Like this taps me out of regeneration, but if you want to sack all your permanents to kill my Masticore, that's a fucking deal. And I got another one in my hand. Incinerate, targeting me. Okay, on the way through. Makes sense. You gotta cast your spells while you can. Found another bobble. Okay, I think this time around, I'm gonna discard the bobble, or is it the other Masticore? I think it's the bobble. Because now I want to use Mishra's Helix to make sure that he never gets back into this game. Ooh, the Karn Father. So I can Helix this turn. One, two, three, four, five. Helix. Attack for four. I'm going to leave up regeneration this time rather than attacking for an extra two. Because this could be like the end of the line. Lightning Bolt, Lightning Bolt. All right, trying to figure out how I lose here. Lightning Bolt, Lightning Bolt. Fire Blast, I'm still at two. Uh-oh. I could lose this. Uh, if he has Fire Blast, land any burn spell. Oh, no! I'm not feeling good about this. Okay. Um, I have Lethal, though. Okay. You slow rolled the Lightning Bolt. You got me. I couldn't afford to... Tap the fetch land in the end step. Discard Masticor. Tap nothing to Tangle Wire. Karn. One, two, three, four, five. Animate my five, five. Animate my three, three. And you have Lightning Bolt or you don't. Let's go. Could also Fire Blast to kill Masticor just to stay alive here, but then you don't have permanents to play the game with. For much longer this is actually really close i thought this was much more in the bag than it actually is all right have to fire blast the masticore that's a relief don't really need that anymore you're at two with a bloodstained mire that can put you to one the turn that i didn't attack with mistress factory to leave up reanimation could have been the two lethal damage but also i might have lost my masticore eight damage ago and they could be at 10 or eight instead of two. Oh, that was tight. <laughs> okay, to the sideboard we go. I believe this is the deck with bottle gnomes in it. Hell yeah, I love this card. Bottle gnomes, one three, sack it to gain three life. One three blocks every creature in the deck. If damage would be dealt to a player, that player exiles that many cards from the top of their library instead. That's got to be for this matchup if it's for anything, right? Just switch from life points to deck points. Zern Orb, absolutely. That's my counter to Price of Progress. Let's review his sideboard. This is very small, and I can't really get it bigger. Two Sulfuric Vortex, Shattering Pulse is scary. Two Price of Progress to go up to a total of three. That's what he's going to bring in. It's the Shattering Pulse, the Pops, maybe the Sulfuric Vortexes. I'm not going to bring in Powder Keg until... He shows me that he's bringing in permanents that I care about. Like the permanents that I care about are basically Sulfuric Vortex. Lots of one drop creatures here, but I have Powder Kegs for those already. Okay, what am I taking out? Mishra's Helix actually seems really bad for the matchup. Big like Tangle Wire. This is a low resource deck anyway. Bobble is entirely replaceable. That's kind of the whole point of Bobble. Tangle Wire is MVP. Masticor, MVP. Karn is how I win the game in the back half. Like, when I actually turn from control to beatdown, that's where Karn comes in. It might be Mindstone. 
I like Dynamo a lot. I think it's actually Bobble. Like, that's just such a weird card to have in this deck. I think that's a sign of the card pool more than anything else. Okay, three Tangle Wires and a Metal Worker. I'm going to keep this. No Acceleration, but I do have Rashad and Port to slow him down a little. Oh no, Jackal Pup. It's the good one. Okay, there's Ancient Tomb. That means I can Tangle Wire very early. A Metal Worker just dies to everything, even though that is the card I would like to play. I don't think it's the one that makes sense to play. Oh man, there's more. Okay, Firebolt. Sure. I hate that this is Ancient Tomb. That sucks real hard. And the Metal Worker is literally dead on board to the, the Lava Mancer, so I'm going to have to take my medicine here and cast Tangle Wire. I guess the Ancient Tomb pays for itself immediately by tapping the Jackal Pup. Like that, I would have taken that two damage anyway. Look at this deck actually using Fetch Lands to its advantage. Like a real magic deck. And draw... Oh, the Sanctuary. I got a plan. I'll play another Factory. I am curious how quickly my opponent's deck can deal 40 damage to me. Also, Ancient Tomb deals damage. It's not life loss. So, that actually... Uh, I don't take damage from, from, from uh, Ancient Tomb anymore either. Okay, Tangle Wire taps two things this turn. Obviously, Tangle Wire itself, and then I think I just play another Tangle Wire. Yeah, I'm just in complete misery mode. Oh, I can Wasteland them next turn. Him next turn. All right, Tangle Wire, number two. This taps all the permanents, currently has six. Can hit me with Lava Mancer before this happens. Like, Lava Mancer could, at plus instance, can work through this Tangle Wire situation. Oh, but didn't didn't have an instant. All right, gonna lava mance me before all the permanents get tapped anyway. Good call. Another barbarian ring. Yikes. Okay, fade. Fade. Tap tangle wire. Tap tangle wire. Ancient tomb and mistress factory. Play shot in port. And I think I want to Wasteland. Yeah, I'm going to Wasteland. Next turn is the Crumbling Sanctuary turn. If I get next turn. You got to tap four things. Uh, I One, two, three, four. Uh-oh, am I just dead right now? Two cards in hand. And I can port before Tangle Wire resolves. So maybe I can force him to tap a creature. We're kind of playing chicken here, but if I move first on the Rashadden port, then Lava Mancer can just use that mana. But tapping four things, okay. Lava Mancer's Lava Mancing. And then you have to tap four things anyway, which is all your things. Okay, there is no game of chicken here. It's just all the things are tapped. Okay. I am dead to Fire Blast when I tap my Ancient Tomb. Okay, one, two. Moment of truth. One, two, three, four, five. Please don't have Fire Blast. Oof. Yep, had it. GG. Yeah, the instant... The Grim Lava Mancer was good for, what, six damage that game? Or four damage and representing more. Just, that was strong. So close. Do I win that game on the play? I think I do. Maybe I need my Powder Kegs just to clear out the... The various dinguses. Metal Worker seems like kind of a liability because everything in their deck kills it. But it's also the thing that like lets me go crazy. But spending three mana, if I untap against the deck with infinite removal spells, I think I, I'd rather just like kind of play fair. Not give them that clean answer and bring in more powder kegs. All right, I talked myself into it. Tormod's Crypt can slow down Lava Mancer or turn off Barbarian Ring. But I don't think that's where I want to be. Bottle Gnome's Powder Keg. Uh, I'm going to keep. These are two sideboard cards in the matchup. And start on Factory. I'm not going to use City of Traders to Powder Keg turn one. I can save that for later. Goblin Patrol. 
That's a one drop, last I checked. Rashad and Port Powder Keg. Powder Keg, if you're not familiar with this card, it's just Ratchet Bomb, but instead of tapping it to put a counter on it, it happens in your upkeep. So you have slightly less control over it, and there's like slightly fewer tricks involved. Like you can't like Voltaic Key or something to get two counters on it in the same turn. I'm gonna put a counter on Powder Keg, and then I can just Wasteland my opponent. That seems kind of cool. Not going to get a lot of opportunities to do that, but I think Bottle Gnomes is better. I'll play the Wasteland, though. And Bottle Gnomes in play. Now I don't even have to pop Powder Keg until I feel like it, because my 1-3 is better than their 2-1. If he Lightning Bolts this, that's like gaining 6 life. Gotta watch out for Price of Progress, because I can slam card next turn and just be huge. Okay, Lightning Bolt. That's a gain 6. Where I come from. There's no haste creatures in the deck, but uh do I want to take two to keep creatures from developing for a turn? I don't think so. I'm just gonna pop. Save two life. Another patrol. That's fine. I have a 3-3 three, three creature that can block. And then I also have Wasteland and Rashadden Port. I'm gonna Wasteland Barbarian Ring. This might be crazy, but it might be great also. Okay, do you want to keep this thing? I'm gonna port the land. Spells, what are those? I do need some kind of action quickly here. Because I'm running out of it. Here's Karn. That's a 4-4 four, four creature. Lightning Bolt going straight upstairs. That's a little bit frightening. Karn becomes a 0-8 if it, if it blocks or becomes blocked. Or, or it just dies. Alright, fair enough. I'm glad that wasn't a spell that deals damage to me, but it's still scary. Ooh. Um, I think Tangle Wire is better than Karn here. Because I can... I could cycle Blasted Landscape, see what happens, and then make a decision. Yeah, that makes sense. Another Rashadden port. If I Tangle Wire, what happens? I'm going to do that. And I don't think I play Rashad and Port, killing my City of Traders here. One, two, three, four, five. Not quite at threshold. Incinerate, that's six. Barbarian Ring is at threshold on the next object that dies. Fading. One, two, three. I'm going to tap my two ports. Another City. One, two, three, four, five. That means I can Karn again here. Also, making a land dead keeps me under price of progress temporarily. Oh, got popped. Am I dead? All right. Got me with the burn. Yeah, this deck is about as exposed as possible to price of progress and really cool games. I, I think I got kind of lucky in the one that I won, like even though it paced out in a the way that it did. Like I was dead to any burn spell and he just didn't have one. And the other two games felt, like, really bad. Uh, once the Shattering Pulses and additional Price of Progresses came in, I'm willing to believe I'm supposed to mulligan more, like, to do bigger things faster. But, yeah, he got me good there. On to the next one. The round two challenge has been made. I'm going with Terrageddon this time. Let's do it. This hand, I am on the draw. Uh, Mulch is pretty dope. Werebear is dope. Yeah, I'm going to keep. Llanowar Waste. Oh, is this the rock? Okay, between his decks, the rock and Aloran both play Llanowar Waste. To be determined. Oh, Mox Diamond. I could turn one a Werebear and save Treetop Village for later. I think I'm going to play Treetop Village and just pass. Or if he's a Aloran... I'm trying to decide if I want to hold up Swords to Plowshares for a turn. Uh, didn't Birds of Paradise on turn one, but Therapy plus Explorer is kind of scary out of that. And the Rock deck, also a Cabal Therapy deck. Okay, I think I want to play Mox Diamond and discard a Forest. Just get that out of my hand. Though doing that does give him more information to Cabal Therapy with. Mistress Factory, this has to be... Yeah, it's the rock. Aloran doesn't have Mistress Factory in it. 
We've narrowed it down to this deck. Okay. Wall of Roots is in play. And I'm going to remove it from play. Don't know if I'm supposed to do that that aggressively, but it's done. I can play Werebear or play Mulch. I think I want to Mulch, actually. Uh, three, only one land found there. And three to the graveyard. I am a Wasteland deck, which uh, Mulching helps dig for. Maybe that's a reason to mulch before I make my land drop, but I wanted to leave up the white for plow, but maybe I'm supposed to take the swing at Wasteland. If Mana Denial is my plan, which I am a Armageddon deck, so it probably is. Just review the engines in the deck. I don't have ways to pick things up from the graveyard once they're there, so I do have to put a creature into play to win the game with. We're not spoiled with Life from the Loam or... Savine's Reclamation, or like whatever it is people do to recur threats from the graveyard once you mill past them. There's no endurance to loop the deck back in. I do have Treetop Village in play, so we got that. And his deck is not a Wasteland deck. Cool. Cabal Therapy. Okay. You can't name Windswept Heath with this. You named Terravore, Armageddon. Named Armageddon. All right. Yep. Swing and a miss on that one. That was probably a good bet, though. That's not a card that is reasonable to defeat on turn three. Seal of Cleansing. That can kill Mishra's Factory, but I'm going to Mulch again. Found Secluded Step. All four of my Mox Diamonds now accounted for. I am also Thresheld. So it's time for... Werebear. How about that Windswept Teeth, by the way? I cracked it, and my choices were Forest or Plains. Adorable. City of Brass. Wait, is that in the rock? I guess there are two of them. Wow, that's embarrassing. This is a two-color deck. This is Ravenous Bee. Oh, Blastoderm. That's even worse. Windswept Teeth. Okay, I can cycle Secluded Step. Another Werebear. I should make sure there's still fetchable lands in my deck. One forest. One. Two forests and a plains accounted for. I have three forests, two plains. All right. Yep, Windswept Heath still plays here. Gonna jam Werebear. And I'm gonna play the Seal of Cleansing. Let's get it into play. Do I want white or red or, or green more? I already have two green, so I'll get a Plains. Seal of Cleansing. And I am bigger than Blastoderm. I can offer up a double block, but that plays into any removal spell. He's got Vendettas and Smothers and Chainer's Edicts, a recurring nightmare also in this deck. Pernicious Deed, awful for me. Clearing out my Mox Diamonds, don't like that. Tilt. Oh, but doesn't have two mana right now. now. All Pernicious Deed does is kill my Mox Diamond, which isn't bad, but also isn't good. All right, he didn't play another mana, so... Oh, I could have tapped Werebear and left up Swords to Plowshares. Awkward. Oh, sick. Um, Wasteland. Fuck your Llanowar Waste. Because City of Brass always deals damage. Llanowar Waste only sometimes does. Mishra's Factory. I feel like is not going to... All right, I'm going to hit a Llanowar Waste. And I'm going to Seal of Cleansing the Deed. Knowing that my Mox Diamond's going to go with it. That's fine. And this Blastodorm still chilling. He knows the only card in my hand is Swords to Plowshares. And Blastodorm has Fading, so it dies when you can't remove a Fade counter, not when the last Fade counter is removed. Oh, you have two of those? I guess you do, don't you? Disappointing. I guess I should push for four damage, because my things are going to die anyway. Yeah, push for four damage. I mean, if he deeds, though... Like, he's got to add to the board, because this Blastoderm's dying in the next upkeep. And all of my Moxen being dead is pretty bad for the Armageddons that are in my deck. Maybe I should be sandbagging lands more than I am doing right now. There's no discard spells in his deck that can take lands. He's got Duress and Cabal Therapy. Cabal Therapy, huge beating right now, if he's got one. Oh, you could sack the Blastoderm to Cabal Therapy. That's brutal, because it's dead anyway. Oh no. Please don't see it. Please don't see it. 
just drawing a redundant copy of the card you already have when that they've seen off Cabal Therapy, the worst. All right. Ravenous Baloth. Well, plowing that. Oh, sack a beast. Blastroom is a beast. Yikes. Oh, well, I'm going to plow the Baloth. They're going to gain uh, eight life here, one way or the other. This is a good Armageddon turn. Oh, fucking Savannah Lions. Okay. Uh, if I attack with Treetop Village, he can deed for zero and kill it, but that leaves my Werebear behind. So I'm actually in for that. Because Pernicious Deed doesn't say non land, it specifically says artifact, creature, enchantment. And now he doesn't know the cards in my hand anymore. Oh, is it Spirit Monger time? Oh, Deranged Hermit, that's so much worse. Okay. Here they are. And all those squirrels are pretty bad with Pernicious Deed in play. I'm going to start holding lands back for when I draw Armageddon. I'm going to give them the option to pay for Deranged Hermit or not. Like, I'm not going to attack and give them an easy chump. Like, it's going to cost you two more life if you want to keep that thing between City of Brass and Lanowar Waste. All right. Do you have the recurring nightmare? If so, this game's probably over. Oh, no. Oh, should have plowed that Deranged Hermit, it turns out. I still can, but that was bad. Yeah, if you've never seen Recurring Nightmare before, this card is beyond fucked. Cabal Therapy from hand. All right, I'm going to plow Deranged Hermit in response. I got to break that up. But I can't beat a Recurring Ravenous Bayloth either. And my hand is just Savannah Lions. My only chance in this game is Armageddon off the top. And even that, I don't think I beat, because the squirrels just go wide around my werebear. There's seven squirrels. I take six, then five, then four. Yeah, I, I don't even win with Armageddon here. Another werebear. I'm not winning a game where I'm not attacking. I'm also not winning a game where I am attacking. Seven. Well, let's go. Attack with my creatures. Blocking Treetop Village with... All Many squirrels. Okay. Um, pernicious Deed for two. I'm going to play Werebear because I'm not... I'm not beating the the Nightmare. Yeah, he's got enough mana to... Nightmare and Deed for two. Like, just get Ravenous Bayloth back into play. Oh, this card. Went with Blasted Arm. Interesting. Cycle thank Tranquil Thicket. Cycle saluted step. Just trying to make anything happen here. Oh, the, the big father. A little late. 9-9 nine, nine trample. He has not at any point had to crack this pernicious deed, which is just the worst. Yep, nightmare. Gets back ravenous Bayloth. Deed for two has finally popped. All right, Terravor, you're up, big guy. I take five here. He knows I have Savannah Lions in play, or in hand. Okay, um, Terravore, Savannah Lions, and Wasteland the Mistress Factory. We're all in. I have an 11-11 Trample. You can't Vendetta that. I guess you can, you would just have to sack all your creatures first. Another Ravenous Bayloth, okay. Didn't attack. 5, 9, 10, 11. All right, 13. Nimble Mongoose, if I attack with Terravore, uh, I'm just not going to do that. It's going to... Okay, somehow this board has stabilized. Oh, wait, hold on. Is this... Do I have a lethal attack uh, or forced blocks? 5, 9, 13. You can put... Yeah, actually. Because Terravore tramples. Okay, uh, if you... Triple block Terravore, then you you either can't kill it or you die to Savannah Lions. If you block Savannah Lion with Ravenous Bayloth and then block with the two other beasts on Terravore, Terravore is trampled, that doesn't matter. Go to 9, take 11. Do I have this attack? I think I do. Savannah Lions, FT Dub? Is it there? My damage doesn't stack anymore. I guess you could sack the one blocking Savannah Lions. Yeah, sack the one blocking Savannah Lions. Lose your whole squad. 
Whoa. How did this happen? How did this happen? I thought we were dead. And there's the scoop. Holy guacamole. Terravore. I don't... Uh, wow. I am not sure what just happened. My opponent activated Recurring Nightmare like four times, and then I won the game. That was bonkers. Okay. Uh, got away with something there. Rexian Furnace. Exile the bottom card of target player's graveyard. Uh, yeah, Graveyard Hate against the Recurring Nightmare is good. Bind is counter-target activated ability, including Recurring Nightmare, also including Ravenous Baloth. Enlightened Tutor. I don't think that's what this matchup is for. Humble. Target creature loses all abilities and has base power and toughness 0-1. I don't think that's for this. Ray of Revelation. He should not at any point have Recurring Nightmare in play where I can target it with that. What's in his sideboard? We got Duress, Smother, Engineered Plague, Haunting Echoes, Chainer's Edict. Not a whole lot going on over there. Um, the Tormod Scripts taking me off Threshold are kind of annoying. But, yeah. Alright, I'm going to have Bind for sure. Gigapede. If it's in my graveyard, I can discard a card and return it to my hand. I think I do want Gigapede. Just 6-1 Shroud that never dies until it gets exiled. Worship gets swept up in Pernicious Deed. I think I do want the Graveyard Hate. And what else? Uh, I kind of want to cut Savannah Lions, but it also was just absolutely heroic. But that doesn't mean it's good. Um, there's a lot of X1s in that deck. Weathered Wayfarer is still good. Mox Diamond is like the crux of the deck. Seal of Cleansing. Seal of Cleansing doesn't have any real targets in the deck. Like Pernicious Deed and, Rec and Recurring Nightmare, you can both play around. Maybe that means I want a Savannah Lion still in, like, to apply pressure. Or do I want, like, Dillow Cloak? But I don't have Shroud creatures, and Lifelink doesn't really matter here. I'm gonna try it like this. Maybe I want Sphere of Resistance, because I'm on a Mana Denial plan, and his deck's kind of expensive. If there's a Game 3, I might mess around with Sphere. Oh god, Rith's Grove. That card is not good. Uh, but I'm gonna keep this hand. It's as good as it gets in this format, honestly. And it's a combo with Weathered Wayfarer. We got a Swamp. Alright, are you back with a Vendetta? Wall of Blossoms, okay. That'll buy some time. Not that I was in a hurry to attack. Uh, activate Weathered Wayfarer. I have fewer lands than my opponent. I can tutor up a land in my deck. Nantuko Monastery is a 4-4 with first strike eventually. I could... Actually, no, I have Rith's Grove, um, so I do have green. I could get Windswept Teeth. Yeah, I don't think I want to set myself back on mana just yet. I'm going to get Windswept Teeth and get a basic forest and cast the Goose. Pernicious Deed. And me without my Ray of Revelations. A tutor up another land. Is this where I get Tranquil Thicket, or do I start getting Treetop Villages? I could get Wasteland. Let's see what kind of game you want to play. Yeah, I guess if I'm representing Wasteland every turn, maybe the uh, Pernicious Deed has to respect my 1-1s. One okay. Yeah, he got a 2-for-1 out of that. Not bad. But it's out of the way. I can develop further. Okay, uh, Werebear. Do I want Rith's Grove, or do I want to actually develop on mana? God, Rith's Grove is bad. It does tap, it doesn't come into play tapped, so I think I want to play Wasteland and pass the turn. Like, I can at least spend the mana the turn that I use it on Risk Grove. There's the other deed. There's only two in the deck, right? Oh, no, there's there's four. I was just confused by the art. Oh, yeah, yeah, no wonder you always have it. Okay, sure. That is the whole thing that this deck is doing, I suppose. All right, knowing that there's four pernicious deeds, I should probably have uh, my enchantment removal in the deck. Whoops. Okay, I'm going to mulch. Oh, I got three. Lost a Terravore to that, but that's okay. Um, Swords to Plowshares gets me Threshold. 
and I can play Treetop Village and attack. Yeah, I'm just going to pressure. Like, being ahead on board like this, I can ride one creature at a time, and you can decide if... All right. Well, still a removal spell from hand when he had one in play already. We're working through it. Oh! Well, have you been sandbagging lands, or what's going on here? Um... I'm going to attack with Treetop Village. If I can flush out the deed with this, I'm happy with that, because Armageddon is, like, my plan over the next couple turns anyway. I right, found three damage right there. Windswept Heath, Fetch. Get a Forest, and play Werebear. I'm just going to dance around this deed for as long as I can. All right, found a land. Yavimaya Elder. That's a lot of lands. <laughs> yeah, when that dies, you search your deck for two basics. How many basics are in the list? Oh, millions. All right. We're not going to run them out of basics. Well, I am going to... I'm actually going to animate Treetop Village here. Ask you the same question. Anytime I can push for damage without letting Deed 2 for 1 me, I'm going to take that. Okay, there's the Deed for 0. That kills the village. I knew that. No surprise there. Elder gets two lands. I'm going to play another Werebear. And I think it's time for Rith's Grove. Yeah, Rith's Grove, pick up the Plains. And I'm not going to jam Wayfarer into the third deed. I'm kind of playing with fire, dancing around this Armageddon. Like, maybe I'm just supposed to jam it. Deranged Hermit. Okay. All right, that. All right, yeah, if I get in now, then the Hermit dies for sure. The Squirrels get smaller. Okay, um, I can... Oh, I only have one white. Oh, I get a land drop afterwards. All right, never mind. It's fine. Uh, one, two, three, four. There's the Geddon. Five lands from you, four lands from me. And lanes... Wayfarer, and pass the turn. Can't pay the echo on that. I know there's a swamp in hand, so he's going to hit at least one land drop here. Treetop Village, okay. I can Dust Bowl that immediately. Oh, I can just draw a Wasteland also. Uh, I'm going to offer up a Quadruple Block and then blow it out with Swords to Plowshares. Like, we either go into Chump Block mode, or you get blown out by Swords to Plowshares, and there's not really other game plans here. Interesting. Took three and left the other squirrels in play. Waste the treetop village. There's the swamp I knew about. Mulch is a sweet one. Gonna attack with my bears. My werbers. Alright, going to four. And if I Rith's Grove this turn, if he has a land, I can Wayfarer. Or I can just pull ahead on lands now. I could cast Mulch now. That might find Gigapede. Forest, forest. There is a forest left in my deck. Okay, I'm going to fetch my last forest and cast Mulch. Mulch? Oh, I dumped the Gigapede. The Gigapede. Okay. And I can cast next turn because I have the Werebears. Six ones don't line up well against Squirrels, but that was still the line I was looking for. And he tapped out. Wow, that game one Terravore was bonkers, just wading through pernicious deeds in game two, just never giving him a two-for-one off Deed. It was kind of lucky I never drew a Mox Diamond, because Deed would just got that for free. Probably should have had enchantment removal in my deck for the turns where he can't actually kill my creatures, and you have to, like, sort of hang Deed out. That's something you recognize after you play a little bit, which I didn't recognize first, is that pernicious Deed costs money, or money, lol, mana, and you are, if you're trying to kill two drops, like Werebears, you need five mana. I'm a Wasteland Dust Bowl deck, Armageddon deck. At some point, you have to hang Deed out where it can't actually kill the things that you need it to. So enchantment removal becomes good. Lesson learned. On to the next match. We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. 
friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards, and you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. I'm going to go with Elves for round three. Standstill and Rexer are the two most exciting things, and let's get Elves done, and then I'm also just going to hope that he chose Goblins here. Just get the classic Elves versus Goblins matchup. I'm on the play. Well, there's going to be no surprises what decks I'm playing here. Uh, I'm going to keep this. It has turned to Elvish Champion, which is all I want in the world. It's weird that I'm playing Elves without Wire, or, uh, without uh, Elvish Visionary. Every time I see Wirewood Symbiote, I'm like, oh good, this hand draws cards. But nope, not really. Not in this format. He mulled to six, and off we go. No doubt what I'm playing here. Do you have Goblin Lackey? Uh, uh oh. What's this Lotus Petal deck? This has to be Stifle Knot, right? Yeah, Lotus Petal. Okay. Grixian Dreadnought's a scary one. Uh, one Psychotog in this list. Okay. First Days deck we've played against. I can play around Days by dumping out my dudes and not going for the big one. Uh, Disrupt. Counterspell. Boomerang. Limb Duel's Vault. Could just be setting up a turn 2 Dreadnought with Limb Duel's Vault. In which case I want to jam as hard as I can. There's no sweepers in this main deck. Duress isn't going to be disappointed in this whole matchup. Only two dazes, though. Two dazes, one counterspell. I think it is likely... Oh, shit. We paired against the deck with uh, Parish and Plague Spitter in the sideboard. <laughs> shit. Well, sideboard games are going to be tough. But I'm going to go wide here and try to set up the biggest turn two I can muster. I kind of expect a Limb Duel's Vault. All right, didn't have one. Cool. What are we doing here? Just nothing. Ooh, Messenger is hot. Oh, mess picking up Messenger with Wirewood Symbiote. That is a line I didn't see at first. I think Elvis Champion is strong enough that it could bait a Counterspell if he has one. But Sylvan Messenger is what I really want. Oh my god. Oh my god. Legacy needs to adopt that play pattern immediately. Oh, gushing in response. This is really bold. Play a lot of gush in my vintage days. And, okay, foil. Gushed, picked up two lands. Foil, discarded, island, and vision charm. Okay, sure. Can I cast Sylvan Messenger this turn? I can go one, two, pick up a forest, pick up an elf. If I think Sylvan Messenger is better than having all these elves in play next turn, which I think I do, and right now, while well, there's nothing in his deck that can counter it, so I'm going to attack with the two untapped creatures and leave my mana creatures behind. So green, green, bounce a forest to untap Findhorn elves, bounce Quarian Ranger to untap other Findhorn elves, Sylvan Messenger. Show me the good news. What's the message? Oh, Stifle's in this deck. But if you Stifle it, it's going to cost you your Lotus Petal. And I can Machine Gun after that. If he has another foil, I can get another 3 for 1 off this. Okay, yeah, probably worth doing, though. Let's be honest. Um, It was going to be worth more than a 3 for 1 over the course of that game. It might have been a 3 for 1 right now if it resolved. Does he have it? Two cards in hand. Are they Dreadnought Stifle? They're not. Okay. Portent, did he shuffle? Did not, okay. Likes the cards that he sees. And I'm just going to attack for my three. I'm out of spells now. The double free counter spell, brutal. I'm really glad Force Wells banned in this format. That would be no fun at all. A spell? Kind of a spell. I'm going to attack with all my creatures. This is the, the backside of the Elves deck. In all formats, just... It's like a, it's like playing Storm, but you always have Young Pyromancer in play. Like, okay, you stop my champion, you stop my messenger, take three to five for the rest of the game. Luda Delta has a real cost right now. Oh, wow. That's some bullshit. 
Okay, so this costs five, and I have, okay, yeah, I have Ranger and Priest. I can definitely Helix if I leave my Priest back. Okay, five, four, five, Mishra's Helix. And tap all your lands, unless you want to Counterspell. Okay, in the upkeep, tap the three lands. You can, oh, I'm targeting my own lands. X equals three. Safe to say I've never activated this card on Magic Online before. Oh, it's going to cost two life, put you dead on board to have access to two mana. You lose the Underground River regardless. All right. Didn't crack the Delta. And dead. Wow. Ships in the night. But that was the easy one. That was the one where the interaction is one for one and kind of awkward. The hard one is going to be the Parish. Plague Spitter, for the record. At the beginning of your upkeep, Plague Spitter deals one damage to each creature and player. When Plague Spitter dies, deals one damage to each creature and player. Three mana, two, two, Phyrexian Horror. So Parish is destroy all green creatures. Plague Spitter pings all creatures on its controller's upkeep. Smother, Vendetta, Powder Keg. Yeah, this deck knows what its weaknesses are. So uh, Choke, definitely coming in. Collar of the Claw, really important. This is a sweet one. This had a lot of hype when Legions came out. 2-2 two, two, Flash. When Collar of the Claw enters the battlefield, make a 2-2 two, two green bear for each non-token creature put into the, your graveyard from the battlefield this turn. Naturalize kills the Dreadnought. That's pretty good. Winter Orb seems fine, but not great. And this isn't really a Mastercore matchup either. Nah. All right. These are what I'm bringing in, these seven cards. Bloodline Shaman is choose a creature type or reveal a top card of your library. If it's that type, put it in your hand, otherwise put it in your graveyard. I am diluting my elf count here, but I think that's okay. Um, Rafelos versus Priest is kind of interesting. They're both big mana. Do I want big mana? Mistress Helix seems like the GG. Uh, Hermit seems really bad, actually. Um, and I'll say, I'll have one Kamal in the deck to tutor for with Fierce Empath. Bloodline Shaman is card advantage, but like, actually, that seems really important. This is tough. Um, I'm going to cut some Priests of Titania rather than the Rafeloses, because I'll always have Forests. I won't always have Elves. And Elvis Champion gets above the Plague Spitter, so I need the max number of those. I'm going to keep all my one drops in, and do I just save and naturalize? Or... Mistress Helix was really fucked up. Uh-oh, can't figure it out. I'm going to shave and naturalize. Two seconds left, submit the deck. Oh no, I didn't actually cut the cards! <laughs> Oops. Ah, uh, I spent too much time thinking about that. Submitted a 66 card deck. All right. <laughs> Uh, that's the uh, danger of open lists. He's not going to deck me. Um, I will keep this hand. For a 66 card deck, my hand is actually really good. Queer and Ranger, Findhorn, Elves. That represents a lot of mana contained in a couple of cards. Found a land right away. Elfies. Island Portent. Island Portent Keep. I'm jealous. Did not choose to shuffle it. Like the cards, just casting Ponder there. Casting terrible, terrible Ponder. Well, Rafelos, you're very good. Get in there. And I'm going to cast Wirewood Symbiote to protect my friends in case they need prote protection. I could have sought myself back a forest to get Quarian Ranger and Wirewood Symbiote into play this turn, but I think I'm okay taking it slow here. Oh no, missed a land drop? After... Did you misclick on Portent? What happened here? Huh. That's either suspicious or wonderful. I don't want to be a bad sport in this exp exhibition match here. But I am not sure what just happened. And Quirion Ranger. Everything that I care about costs three. Unless he's just walking me in with a... Oh, that would be sick. If he's just, like, walking me in with double Lotus Petal Parish, 
I would give mad props to that play. I think I need to get Bloodline Shaman in here. Just start drawing cards. With Symbiote and Quarian Ranger in play, Bloodline Shaman is just ripping through the deck. Alright, do you have Lotus Petal Perish? Did you get me? Land Lotus Petal Perish or Petal Petal Perish? Oh, disappointing. Looks like we both fucked up this match. I submitted 66 cards and that must have been a misclick on Portent because nothing else makes sense. Okay, are you dead? If I play Elvis Champion. Uh, 3, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, yep. Okay, uh, Elvis Champion. Untap for Fellows. And go to combat. Here they come. Not sexy, but there it is. Unclear what just happened there. I think we both made mistakes. But on to the next match. I am choosing Rexer for round number four. I am very excited for Standstill. And I don't want to pair Standstill into Goblins. So I'm going with the Creature deck. I am metagaming him to... He has Goblins and Aloran left. I'm going to metagame him to save Aloran for the finale. Aloran versus Standstill for the finale. I'm thinking he's on Goblins here. Well, I lost the die roll. He kept seven. Moment of truth. Are we getting lackeyed? Oh, it is Aloran. He saved Goblins for the finale. Birds of Paradise Mirror. What's up? Here's that Bloodstained Mire I talked about. This stupid fucking Bloodstained Mire. Uh, honestly, I think it's awesome. Here we are. Uh, we both chose our combo deck for this round. That's great. Mine's more sort of like a mid-range value deck, I guess, but depending on your definition of combo. is This is a Lauren. It does still have three deeds in it. There's Engineered Plagues in the sideboard. Cabal Therapies in this deck. Soul Warden is Infinite Life. Mana Wars Infinite Bounce. Raven's Familiar is Draw Your Deck. There is not actually an Infinite Damage combo here. Oh, uh, Living Wish is in the deck, so what's in the sideboard? Maggot Carrier. Okay, yeah, there is an infinite combo. All right, sure. Got it. Oh, we're Living Wishing immediately. I'm scared. Am I just getting turn three Alorand? Cabal Therapy. What do you name here? Survival? Named Survival. Yep, don't have it, but that was the name. We agreed on that. For this Bloodstained Mire, there's three Swamps, one Mountain in my deck. Okay. Guess I have to lead on the Wall of Blossoms and just see what happens. Am I getting turn three'd? I'd be impressed, but it's definitely possible. I have the Avalanche Riders and the Recurring Nightmare, but he's untapping into five mana, which is plenty to win the game. Oh, just factor fictioning. Um, you can have the two Alorans or all the cards that go with Aloran, I think. A combo deck at least makes this kind of a binary choice. Yeah, you just take the value things. Just always take the three card pile. Oh, I'm gonna... Oh, Avalanche Riders is so bad now. I hope I draw a card. Uh, a real card. Like something I want to cast. As Veteran Explorer in hand with Cabal Therapy in the graveyard. I could just drop my Nightmare now. And be set up for next turn. Yeah, that does sort of hang it out there, but there's a Cabal Therapy in the mix already. Yeah, I'm just going to play Nightmare and hope I'm not dead. What white cards are in the deck? Why would I play Brushland? Uh, there's Radiance Dragoons, Monk, Realist. Yeah, Monk Realist is Destroy Target Enchantment. That matters. And Aloran is symmetrical, and I'm a deck full of creatures. So I got that going for me. I'm just going to play Carpalooza and Forest and pass. Let's protect my engine from Cabal Therapy. If he's got the combo, I couldn't stop it anyway. And if he doesn't have the combo, I can start riding next turn and actually destroying lands. And not just one, but several. There's the island we saw, Factor Fiction. There's the Explorer. We know he's got Therapy. I kind of want him to discard Avalanche Riders for me because it's better in my graveyard than it is in my hand. And that also ramps me uh, if he uses Veteran Explorer to do that. 
But if I'm dead, it doesn't really matter. But two Alorans already accounted for. Eternal Witness, not legal in this format. Okay, what basics do I want? It's mostly a black deck. It's mostly green-black. I already have red. Oh. Moving this box around is not helping me find my... Okay. I'm good on red and green. Definitely want at least one Swamp. And... Yeah, I guess I just take Swamp Forest. So the Plains turns on... No, Plains sucks. All right, Forest and Swamp. There they are. You probably name Monk Realist if you're looking at my list. Name Survival again. Just doesn't want to play against that. Fair enough. So he either doesn't have a Lauren or didn't see the line of Monk Realist. I'm going to give him credit and say he doesn't have a Lauren. At least I hope. He is Blessing targeting two Alorans and Factor Fiction. <laughs> They're back in there. Back in the mix. Survival off the top. Ooh, Mesmeric Fiend. That's a good one. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. Not quite enough to do everything in my hand. I'm gonna Mesmeric Fiend and see what sort of decisions I need to make. Take a peek. Mesmeric Fiend is Tide Hollow Scholar. I get to look at a card and take it. Living Wish, Intuition. Oh, I have to take Intuition. Because that just gets three Alorans and then the game ends. Yep. Easy choice there. And then... One, two, three, four, five. Lots of lots of mana of all colors available. Avalanche Riders. Uh I'm actually gonna fetch the basic mountain. Hell yeah, Bloodstained Mire. Let's go. There it is, that honest to goodness Bloodstained Mire. Avalanche Riders. I think I wanna take out and it really doesn't matter. I'm gonna start with Lanor Waste. And Riders does have haste. Let's go. Ride or die. And I can loop rec Recurring Nightmare next turn. I just don't pay the echo on Riders, and I can blast it back and forth. Oh, here's the Living Wish. Getting Academy Rector. Oh, okay. Tilt. Forgot that was in the deck. Should have killed the tower. I had all the information and just chose not to use it. Uh, he does need to hit off Raven Familiar. Ah, fuck. Yeah, I punted this one. I just didn't consult the deck list. Alright, please miss, please miss, please miss, please miss. Ah, I deserve it. I deserve it. Okay, I'm f 6 now, but my opponent needs to find Soul Warden in their top. They get to see three cards for every one life. Uh, yeah, they can look at their whole deck to find Soul Warden. I had the information. I had it. Just... Uh, ne it, you're never too cool to review the information you have available to you. I deserve this. Okay, to the sideboard. Mog Fanatic. Um, that's actually really good. Uktabi Orangutan is only artifacts. Elvish Lyrist is enchantments. Last Miner, destroy target non-basic land. That's pretty sick. Duress and Mesmeric Fiend. You are a combo deck. Iroblast can hit the Harpy or the Familiar. Engineered Plague, Bone Shredder. Most of this is a wishboard. Uh, it's like not really a sideboard at all, except for the Engineered Plagues. This Engineered Plague particularly mess me up. Could name Horror, and then I can... Actually, that doesn't work, because then Mesmeric Fiend enters the battlefield and leaves the battlefield at the same time, where... And I get to take a card forever. So that's actually fine. I'm going to bring in all of this disruption. I don't think I need to combo kill them with a Chroma. Monk Realist is the best card in the deck. Orangutan, there's no, no artifacts. Dragoons, my life total is not important. Siege Gang Commander can pick off creatures, and it also goes wide. I like that. Wall of Roots and Birds of Paradise help me go fast. Do I need to go fast? In Wall of Roots, pretty awkward. Like, there's not a lot of blocking that's going to happen, so Birds of Paradise plus my 23 land seems like enough. Wall of Blossom's also pretty bad when nobody's blocking. Avalanche Riders, I blew it, buddy. You tried. Search your library for a basic land, put it on the battlefield tab. So that's Rampant Growth Creature with Echo. 
Bone Shredder, that can kill the familiar in response to Cavern Harpy. Living Death. I don't think I want to give my opponent all his creatures back. Okay. We're not going to get like the mega sexy Rexer stuff going on here because I have to take the control roll. But uh, yeah, uh, just bringing in things that disrupt Aloran and letting my creatures and engine do stuff besides. Oh, I had it. If I just destroy the, the correct land. Okay, I'm going to keep this one. And I get to lead on Birds of Paradise and then go Mesmeric Fiend and Duress on the following turn. Birds, get in there. It's a pretty painful spread of mana here, but it does cast all my spells. You've got a bird. Carpluzen Forest. Gonna Mesmeric Fiend first. Make sure there's actually a non-creature spell I can take with the rest in there. Because Mesmeric Fiend doesn't care. Ball Therapy, Cavern Harpy, Intuition, Multiple Living Wishes. If I take Cabal Therapy, then he can't take my Survival. He has indicated in the past that he likes naming Survival with that card. And Survival is actually in my hand. And that is one of the only plays that results in a... Like, he can go Living Wish plus Cabal Therapy. All right, I'm going to take Therapy, and then I'm going to Duress and take Intuition. Yeah, take Intuition, leaving you with Cavern Harpy and two Living Wishes. Okay, there we go. I'm executing the plan that I signed up to play. Ooh, played Basic Forest, which is a card I didn't know about. Wirewood Savage, whenever a beast enters the battlefield, draw a card. Yeah, that goes off with Cavern Harpy, because Cavern Harpy is a Harpy Beast. So you can play Savage and then just Harpy, Harpy, Harpy. Every two mana, Harpy bounces itself and you draw another card. Granger is tapped. Okay. Unfortunate, but completely reasonable. Black, Colorless, Mesmeric Fiend. Do I want to take Harpy or Savage? Probably Harpy because it's a combo piece all on its own. Yeah, Savage requires help. And then I can get survival in right now. And I have a creature to start surviving with next turn. Even get a cheeky point of damage through. There's the gemstone mine. Which is why we played forest last turn. Because gemstone mine sucks. That land is honestly so terrible. I think I gotta start blowing up lands. Um, is that accurate? What creatures are in my deck? I could get bone shredder. And kill Wirewood Savage. Because there is a Harpy in the sideboard for Living Wish. Or no, I... One, one, two. I can Survival twice. I could get a three drop. Alright, I need to get Squee first. That's how this works. Activate Survival. Discard Granger. And I get Squee. Squee, Goblin, Nabob. And then I Survival again. Squee comes back to my hand from the graveyard every upkeep, so I get to keep doing that. And I can get Bone Shredder. And then Bone Shredder and kill Wirewood Savage. Or do I want to kill Birds of Paradise? It's honestly close. Like, I could kill Bird and then... Yeah, I think I want to constrict the Bird. And then I can start getting Avalanche Riders next turn. If he has a land... That makes the requisite color to wish for and cast Cavern Harpy right now. He gets to draw a card. Uh, that does it. Oh, you just had Cavern Harpy? Another one? Didn't I take that? I did. Shit. That sucks. Well, punished for that. Tried to play a long game and got smushed by the short game. But Forest doesn't cast Harpy twice. Could Living Wish here with the mana you have left... Okay, uh, I'm going to get back Squee. I'm not going to pay for Bone Shredder. I'm going to hope that I draw Recurring Nightmare, the Granger. Survival, dump the Squee. Mog Fanatic can pick off... No, can't pick off Harpy. That's not how that works. I could get Mesmeric Fiend. I could also just get Riders. How much mana do I have? Yeah, I think I want Riders. Well, Magic Online is struggling here. 
Riders coming in. I'm going to destroy the basic forest. I want them to work through the gemstone mine if they want to keep playing the game. Like, that's going to cost you if that's how you want to do this. City of Brass. All right. This mana is going to hurt. And Living Wish has finally been cast. Getting Monk Realist. Yeah, that's a good one. I can blow up my survival. Get Squee back. Come on, Recurring Nightmare. Recurring Nightmare off the top. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, Monk Realist. If I destroy City of Brass. Okay. Um, activate Survival. Discard the Squee. I could get Mesmeric Fiend. I could also just get uh, Siege Gang Commander and get to work here. I think I want Riders, though. Just going to keep riding. Riders. I can destroy the City of Brass, which forces him to tap the Gemstone Mine for the Monk Realist. I can survive a one more time on the way out. I can get another Avalanche Riders, or I could check the hand again with Mesmeric Fiend. Oh no. Oh, Monk Realist. Oh, did you think this was a 3-drop? Why'd you spend that mana? That's weird. Okay, I get one more for the road. Sacrifice the Avamaya Granger, or discard it, whatever I'm doing here. I can get Mesmeric Fiend to check the hand. I can jam Siege Gang Commander. Or I could just keep riding. I've been on this mana denial strat so far. I feel like checking the hand again with Mesmeric Fiend is probably right. Or I could get Goblin Bla or Dwarven Blast Miner. But that takes a little while to get set up, and if he just jams a Lauren next turn, I'm in trouble. Alright, I'm gonna get another Fiend. Gotta break up this Harpy business. And I am going to pay the Echo this time. Because I gotta win the game somehow. Ooh, another Riders. Alright. That's the card I considered getting anyway. Uh, two Familiars and a Harpy. I'm gonna take Harpy. And attack with riders. Yeah, if you cast a familiar, you lose your gemstone mine, which is your fourth mana for a Lauren. If you cast a Lauren right now, good job, you deserve it. If he boarded in Engineered Plague and plays it right now, I'm so fucking dead. Just name Nightmare, get all your cards back. Guy's Blessing to start. Oh, targeting my creatures. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, turning off Recurring Nightmare. That's smart. Two Ravens familiars in hand over there. Found Birds of Paradise, that's really good here. Better than he even knows. Red, two, three, four, another Avalanche Riders. I can destroy the Gemstone Mine that's going to die anyway. I could take a color off of Llanowar Waste. I'm going to go after the Basic Forest. I want every spell you cast to hurt. Attack with my Haste Creatures. And I'm going to drop my bonus Birds of Paradise here. Okay, I'm ahead, but I can die to a Lauren. F6. Please don't cast a Lauren. Oh, just nothing go. Didn't even cast a Raven's Familiar. Oh, do you have Factor Fiction? I'm trying to figure out what spell you don't cast there. We pay for Avalanche Riders. Okay. Guess I'm going to find out soon what spell you don't cast here. Duress you. If it's Intuition or Factor Fiction, they have to... All right, it was Intuition. Got him. Yeah, those are the only spells you don't cast there. That was a good draw. <laughs> uh, attack with my creatures. Gotta block at least one of them this time. Monk Realist is going to hit the bin. Did I have lethal if I attacked with my Mesmeric Fiends? Block, block. No, they could have gone to one and regrown whatever the most important card was. So probably not. But you are at two, which is a tough sell on Cavern Harpy. And I used my mana so I can't play Squee as a 1-1, one, one, which I probably would have done if I had mana for it. All in. Here we go. And conceded. Ooh. That was a wild ride. I am into this. Extremely into this. I don't think my sideboarding changes. These are the cards that I have and the cards that I want. Let's go. On the draw for the final round, I'm going to keep this Disruptive Hand with a Survival. What else do you want in your life? Are we going to get Cabal Therapy naming survival just right off the bat? That was a good hit. 
Yep. Blind name survival. Got it. Knows what the important card is. See is that I'm curving discard spells. Let's see what you got. Please don't have a duress proof hand. Okay. We've got Cabal Therapy and Living Wish. Oh, shit. This is bad either way. I guess I take the Living Wish because Cabal Therapy. That's how that card works. All right. Uh, if he wants to ramp us both, he can... I guess he doesn't even need to ramp us both. He could just cast the Cabal Therapy from hand and... All right. Went with the Graveyard one, though. Fair enough. All right. Riggedy Ramptastic. We are ba both hellbent on spells with lots of mana, <laughs> and it's it's a top deck war. Yes, I'm going to use this ability. Thank you very much. Definitely a forest. And do I want the mountain? I have all my colors set up. Siege Gang Commander costs double red. That would be the, the finest punish, but I have double red in my hand. I think I just want forests. Because if I draw survival, I want to be able to shred. Okay. Uh, did he draw a spell that he can cast right now? Is the question. He follows this up with Raven's Familiar. Oh god, there it is. That was so good. Alright, Avalanche Rider's off the top. Let's go. Siege Gang Commander, that's the thing I said. Never gonna blind name that. But the therapy doesn't have to be blind. Like, if he pays for Familiar... Then he can therapy me, take a look at flashback therapy. There's no universe where he blind names Siege Gang Commander. But he can go empty to answer it. Okay. Dang, thanks for the ramp. Okay, if I untap and can start throwing goblins at his creatures, I can break up an Aloran chain. But if he Alorans right now, oh no. One mystery card in hand, what is it? Oh god. You have a Maya Granger. Alright, I can play that at instant speed. I'm going to attack with Siege Gang Commander. I guess I should attack with all my goblins. And throw one of them at Raven's Familiar. Because I can respond by doing it again. Okay, cool. I am ahead, and I have something of a soft lock on the combo. Wall Therapy, two mystery cards in his hand. Now we see the back end of Aloran, when your opponent also has creatures in their deck. I'm going to get the basic mountain so I don't have to take damage every time I activate commander. I am definitely paying the echo. I would like to continue attacking. Birds of Paradise action. I can flash that in. Not that it does a lot. Actually, I think I don't flash in bird in case I draw survival. I want a creature in my hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, they're at three on board. One, two. I can actually only throw two goblins, so they're at uh, five on board. Cabal Therapy. No way you name Birds of Paradise. I'm going to let this resolve. Oh, targeted himself, naming Aloran. Going out like a boss. Yeah, we had Lethal on board. Oh, yeah. Siege Gang Commander holding the fort. Yeah, believe it or not, there was a time where Siege Gang Commander was, like, completely unbeatable. And we just saw that in action it's so much damage it's so much board control removal so bad love that on to the final round the last matchup is upon us it's blue white standstill versus goblins and looking at this list again and looking at his list i was a little worried about this matchup like i tried to metagame against it but i was in a legacy mindset where they're gonna have aether vial and cavern of souls and muxus and all this shit and obviously and like I mean, obviously not Muxus, but Cavern of Souls, Aether Vial, those cards are not in this deck because they're not in the format. This is the Goblins deck. It does have four Wasteland, four Port, which can be kind of rough. I lost the Die Roll, that can be kind of rough. But I have Swords of Plowshares, Wrath of God, Counter Spells line up. There's four Hydro Blast in my sideboard. Opponent kept seven, so I'm not going to be able to keep this. Like, a one blue source, and it's wasteable. I'll send this. Um, this is not much better. Wrath of God can at least like compete in the mid game. All right. I just don't want to go to six. I think standstill is not going to be an option. If he has turn one lackey, I just die if I stand still. So I'll bottom that one and just hope there's no lackey. Guaranteed every time. Source the flashers off the top. 
Okay, uh, Fairy Conclave, let's get that in. The Lackey's gonna connect, as it does. On the draw, I could have at least, like, represented Mistress Factory as a blocker, but on the play, I just have nothing for this. How bad is it? Ringleader. Okay. Which hit Lackey and Fanatic. And do have the Wasteland, damn it. Ugh. Where's the plowshares? Tilt. Guess I have to play the planes now and work my way up to Wrath of God. Taking four up front. Putting a Goblin King. Oh, Well, my factory no longer plays. Oof. It's disgusting. Yeah, turn one Lackey. Maybe I'm supposed to mulligan all the time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yep, I'm dead. Straight up. Wasteland, you're gone. I barely had a chance with the Wasteland, but definitely not without it. That is why I wanted to avoid this matchup, even though, like, yes, I have many tools for it. It's still terrifying. Uh, Circle of Protection, red. Hydro Blast, I'll come in. Hibernation is bouncing green permanence. That doesn't help. Humility doesn't really help here. In Humility, I would, if I could choose to have Humility in play or not in play for the matchup, I would have it in play. But that doesn't mean that it's worth four mana to try to make happen. Dismantling Blow doesn't really have targets. Disenchant. Uh, there are Sulfuric Vortexes in the sideboard, I think. Yeah, two Sulfuric Vortex in the sideboard. Two Blood Moon in the sideboard. Yeah, that card's legal. Okay, um, do I care about Blood Moon? Is Mana Leak how I play this game? Probably not. Like, this is probably a removal game. But Mana Leak gives me generic answers to uh, those enchantments I was worried about. But I don't think he's bringing in Blood Moon. Like, I do have a lot of creature lands, but I also have a lot of non-creature lands. I don't think I want the fourth Decree of Justice. I need to have a stable board before I move into that world. Renewed Faith, like gaining two life and cycling. Whatever, that's not what this is about. Is Mana Leak better than Counterspell against the, with my deck with Awkward Mana and uh, against the Wasteland deck? I think I'd rather leave in all the Mana Leaks before I start like, cut all the counter spells before I start cutting mana leaks. And Absorb's probably worse than all of them. Yeah, I think I have to cut Absorb and just go in on Hydro Blast and Top Red. Though, now that I'm looking at it, bringing in all the Hydro Blast and the COP Red mean that maybe I do want Dismantling Blow and Disenchant. Or I could get the Decree in here, like, to turn the corner quickly. All right, I will bring in, leave in the Dismantling Blow, and because I expect the Sulfuric Vortex for sure. It sucks having a dead card against most of the deck, but it's a very live card against one of the most important cards in the deck. Willing to believe none of that makes sense, but I'm in. Okay, I have the Plow this time. Keep. And I'm going to lead on Conclave. Just get my tap land out of the way first. If he has Lackey, I can plow it. If he doesn't, I can stand still. I'm right, just firing off a Wasteland. I would not have kept a hand that loses to that. Okay, Planes. If I play Planes, then I can plow in the end step and maybe draw an island to jam standstill. Well, I'm a cop, you idiot. Circular Protection is extremely mana intensive. They don't make cards like this anymore for good reason, because they are bullshit. But I'm glad I have it. Okay. Um, I can plow this lackey, or I could just lock it under circle of protection. He did waste my only blue source, which I'm a little worried about. Goblin War Chief. Okay. I have this entire board beat. Uh, red source of your choice would deal this turn. Okay. Yeah, that includes pyrokinesis. To you this turn. Okay, no, no. To you is the important word there. Uh, I'm going to knock out the War Chief, actually. And maybe an island? Tilt. Okay. Decree can at least cycle for a redraw, and Circle of Protection can keep Lackey under control in the meantime. But I'm in some trouble here. All right, end of turn. Cycle Decree. Can't keep missing land drops here. Found a Plains. Okay. There's a blue source. 
I can play standstill and then just ride the circle of protection forever. Or I could see what he's got and factor fiction. Now I'm going to stand still. Because if he has pyroblast, which there are four in the deck, I'd rather this get pyroblast than the factor fiction. Okay. Walking him in. Slow and steady. Okay. Circle of protection. A1. Choose lackey. Circle of protection. A1. Choose pile driver. Are there flaring panes in the sideboard? Did I walk into this? Nope, there's not. Okay. Cool. I might have just walked into a Blood Moon or a Sulfuric Vortex, which are also pretty rough. Second Pile Driver. Okay. Come on, Wrath of God. Another Hydro Blast. Okay, now all my mana's up, so I can put Mishra's Factory in front of Goblin Lackey and actually kill it. That might disincentivize an attack. If he's got, uh, all right, didn't have incinerator. All right, we're going to factor fiction. Do you have another pyroblast? Disappointed. Stand still. Okay. Um, yeah, let's keep standing still wherever I can. How many pyroblasts do you have? Okay. I'm currently at a tenuous holding point against goblins. Uh, that's so annoying. All this attack is doing is making me spend time and mana. Though I guess there is strategic reason to do this because then I can't cycle. So like tying up my mana does matter. But here we are. All of those are under the circle of protection. Matron. All right, just feeding the standstill. Didn't really matter because I barely drew a blue card. All right, what's, what are we tutoring up here? What's the secret sauce? Ringleader. Yeah, that makes sense. That is some sauce. Decree of Justice. All right. Fairy Conclave. Play that. I think I would rather Hydroblast this Ringleader than play Standstill right now. Cycling Incinerator. Is this optional? You may. Okay, fine. All right. Yeah, Cycling Incinerator just for... The extra card, because my deck doesn't have creatures in it. Okay, we're going into combat. Okay. If I activate Mishra's Factory, I can block. But that also turns on... I think that's worth doing. Okay, I'm going to let the Pile Driver triggers resolve. And then... Activate Factory. If you have removal, you did it. Otherwise, I'm going to block your Lackey. And then Circle of Protection, A1, do the Pile Driver, A1, do the other Pile Driver. And did have Incinerator, that's fine. That was always going to work. And pay one, prevent the Matron. Oh no, Wasteland on my blue source. Oh, okay. On my tapped blue source is fine. Oh, I should have Hydro Blasted one of these things. Shit. All right, I'm playing bad. I should have killed Lackey in the end step because I'm going to have to spend all this mana on it anyway. And I can't stand still here. Wow, the mana is fucking bad in this format. This blue white control can't cast a blue spell. All right, circle of protection. Pile driver. Pile driver and Lackey. I take one from Matron. They're starting to push damage because I didn't use my mana correctly last turn. Hydra Blast. On our target spell, if it's red. How'd we do? Do you have another Pyroblast? Wait, what the fuck just happened? Oh, wait, what? Oh. Moto lagged, and I targeted my Adarkar Waste with Hydroblast instead of his Goblin Ring later. <laughs> Fucking great. All right, I'll just draw out Wrath of God, and it'll be fine. All right, Wrath of God, off the top, let's go. And this Circle of Protection is still doing, like, all sorts of damage here. Picked up a Matron and a Prospector. Wrath of God! Alright. Mistress Factory instead. That's a blocker. Or something. Okay, so Lackey should have been dead two turns ago. This Ringleader should have been countered. One of them was a Moto Lag Misclick. The other was an actual just decision fail. Now he can port me off blue every turn. Ugh. 
Okay. Um, oh, I can wasteland the Rashad and Port. I might have to do that, actually. Jack from Pile Driver. Jack from Pile Driver. And protect from Ringleader. All right. Uh, he is being extremely honest about his removal spells in hand, which are none. Uh, because it didn't attack with any of the 1-1s. One okay, end of turn. Hydro Blast. Goblin Lackey. I can't Hydro Blast pile drivers because they have protection from blue and i am going to wasteland their shot and port because that thing will absolutely kill me if i can't cast blue spells this game is over quickly come on island planes do i want planes i mean i'll take it do i stand still here if i stand still i think i'd rather creep behind the the circle i like stand still Okay, I'm going to stand still. I can eat anything smaller than Pile Driver and still cop the Pile Drivers. His factory is blocking as a 3 3 this turn. If he found a Incinerator in the meantime, I am in trouble. This game has played out pretty awesome, though, despite the, the mess. Okay, you either found the third Incinerator or. You just realized what this game is about. Okay, I'm gonna block Skirk Prospector. Because if I block Ringleader and Pump, then I can't stop both Pile Drivers, which I do need to do. And COP Red again, Pile Driver, Pile Driver. You lose your Skirk Prospector, I take three. Siege Gang Commander. All right, come on, Wrath of God. Oh no. Well, I'm. In a lot of trouble to Siege Gang Commander. It can kill my factory right now. Alright, that happened. I found a pain-free source of blue, at least. Wrath of God. Jeez. Hydro Blast Siege Gang Commander right now, while I still can. And taking one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I go to five here if I prevent the pile drivers and then cast Impulse. Because I have to Wrath of God to win this game. One, two, three, four, five. No, I take six. Right. Pile driver. So far, I've taken four damage from this pile driver that I miss, or this uh, ringleader that I misclicked my way into. Uh, one, two, one, two, three, four. Maybe I should prevent damage now, and I can impulse on my turn. Yeah, I'll stop the extra two damage here, leaving up Hydro Blast. I'm gonna Hydro Blast Matron. And if you sandbagged a uh, Sulfuric Vortex here, good job. That Matron came off the ringleader that was supposed to be countered. Wrath of God? An impulse? Show me Wrath of God? Oh my god. Well, there's three Wraths in the deck, and I'm 31 cards into the deck. I can take another three damage here. Go to three. Okay, well, protect myself from pile driver. Protect myself from pile driver. Protect myself from ringleader. And I guess I just tap out. I'm not bluffing anything. And protect myself from goblin matron. And I go to four. Another pile driver. All right, wrath of God. Please. All right, wrath of God. Wrath of God. Oh my God. Sweet, merciful Jesus. Uh, am I dead? I'll put Impulse in my hand. I'm now 36 cards into my deck. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I can stop 5 goblins. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I go to 2. All right. Um, Adakar Waste, get in there, I guess. He's got one card in hand. About to draw another. There's no burn in this deck. All the damage has to come from creatures. I'm at the phase of the game where Mishra's factory... Okay, hold on. Two incinerators left. Sulfuric Vortex is lethal. Price of Progress is lethal. Can't play around that. Okay. I'm going to activate factory. If he does have the incinerator, I go to one instead of two. Of course. Sure. Why not? I activate circle protection with the mana on the way out. Stop a pile driver. Stop a pile driver. 
stop a pile driver and stop a ringleader and I go to one. One life remains. Did you find sulfuric vortex? <laughs> well done. Okay. I mean, when you go almost 40 cards into your deck without seeing the three of that matters, that's the way to do it. Um, I also misclicked and misplayed. Uh, if I hydroblast the lackey, that's a turn that mana's free. This ringleader was good for at least four damage, plus whatever it represented with the matron that came off of it. All right, I was finding Wrath that turn, uh, drawing Flooded Strand, and then impulsing into Wrath, so had it there. I think if you Wrath with Circle of Protection in play, you can't lose anymore. But, all right, GG's. That was fun. Dude, like, those matches were insane. That last match with Goblins, I, I, I can't believe. How many cards did you look at? <laughs> uh, I think it was between 36 and 38. I lost count. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, like, uh, obviously a misclick was involved, but you miscounted mm -hmm. your Monk Realist the match before. <laughs> you gave me, like, three extra turns with Survival, <laughs> thinking it was a three-drop. So, like, we're even. <laughs> I'm not mad about it. Fair enough. <laughs> Mistakes were made. Right. Uh, in it, it it was fun though. Like it was it was such a good time. And like some of those decks have some crazy interactions. Like when we, we were talking um, in in the the, the Alluren matchup, like that deck is probably my favorite one that we played today. Mm -hmm. At least that I played. Alluren was just an absolute delight, um, and it, it was just all of these lines with living wish and like intuition and uh, you know setting up all of these crazy turns. It was it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it a lot. What what, what was your favorite deck that you played today? I think that the uh, Terrageddon deck is the one that is like the right intersection of like play pattern and power that it, mm. like of the five that I played today, I think I would take Terrageddon to a tournament as far mm -hmm. as one that I liked the most. I think it was Rexer, but Standstill appeals to me greatly as well. Like I, I probably would not want to jam elves or mud infinitely because those are just like sort of the same play pattern over and over again. Mm -hmm. It just, can you execute it quick enough to get it through over the exactly. finish line, which is never really my style in any format, but all of the other three decks with the decisions made and like doing combat math and all of that stuff was a lot of fun. It was great. It was great. Like uh, I, I was honestly surprised uh, when we played the very first match with, with mud, I was even surprised at how legit that deck looked like you did all of a sudden you did all this stuff and you had a tangled white going. I'm like, there's, I guess, there's a legit prison deck in the format too. You know, yeah. it's like every single every single archetype has something good to offer. You know, like at least it has one good deck that you can kind of give a shot to, and you know, tune and work and see see where you can take it. Yeah, I think with the the mud matchup, that like the way that the prison elements, I could started to see see how things layered onto each other in the format, and the fact that you were a deck that wins without combat full of instants that you can just shrug off tangle wire uh, i think mm -hmm. mud would have been really great against any of the other nine decks in the gauntlet or i guess other eight decks uh excluding itself uh, just that one burn matchup was tough but that's the sign of a healthy metagame like no deck should beat everything so that was pretty no cool no i was on. I, I was very happy with how everything played out and uh, i feel like the matchups were pretty interesting uh, except maybe they stifle not one where you know <laughs> i failed to find a come one and game two was just <laughs> impossible yeah uh, maybe that one was like the one that i i think that if we had played maybe like three more matches with that deck maybe we could have really gotten to see uh, what makes it tick uh but besides that like it was i feel like every other deck kind of showed what it has to offer in, in a very meaningful way like i feel like every deck kind of Share share the, it's it's piece of the you know it's piece of the metagame you know like what is doing in the metagame and it was very very cool to to do and to play yeah and even the dreadnought deck that didn't really get off the ground when you were like gush picking up two islands drawing two cards discard those two islands add those two cards to foil twice like i thought i sequenced that turn really well to play around counterspell play around days sandbag my best threat for second and like baited me on the first one and just like foil foil if you uh, if you actually untapped into the combo there i would have lost that game so like we can see how the play pattern evolves even though it didn't actually occur in our one set there like really cool yeah. every deck was awesome yeah yeah for sure and it feels like 
what what I what I've been hearing is that uh, the, the format is always in flux, which is very cool. And it was one of those things that even though there's like a limited carpool, uh, you still have movement and you have like new tech that arises, and you even now every now and then you even have new archetypes. Uh, I've been reading that apparently Stasis all of a sudden became like a a solid contender in the format and new tech, you know, like I KLFD played a, a, in an event he top aided with and he had like one of stroke, stroke of genius in his Saluran deck. And it's like one of those cards that you say, that's kind of genius. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it, it's very, very cool how things continue to evolve even, even though technically the format should be stale, but it feels like everything is balanced and, um, it was cool to the very last match was a pretty interesting experience to me because it felt like okay these are two tier one decks facing against each other you know because mm-hmm. all the other ones maybe you have like a tier two a tier three deck going on there but the last is just like this is the cream of the crop which just randomly we ended up you know finding them and, and they they made it the finals uh, but it was it was very cool and one thing that we didn't really say that I wanted to point out is the fact that. Sure, there are certain decks that are going to be a little bit more expensive in paper because, you know, Rexer plays, like, I have no idea how many reserve list cards, so you're, mm-hmm. you know, you're kind of screwed there. But all of the other decks, like, the Goblins deck feels overall very, very cheap, and if you have Goblins in Legacy, you basically just have the deck built already. Um, you have, you know, all of these other decks that are very, very cheap, um, and because all of those pieces don't really see place any, they don't really see play anywhere else. So because of that, they're not really, you know, sought after cards, uh, which makes them fairly cheap. So getting into the format, the barrier of entry is not really super high. Yep. And another thing that I really like that they name specifically on premodernmagic.com is there is no aesthetic gatekeeping. Uh, like, I know mm-hmm. some old school communities, they're starting to relax on it. But for a long time, old school was like, you have to play Alpha, Beta, Unlimited. Like, you can't play your fifth edition Shivan Dragon. You have to get an Unlimited one. And mm-hmm. Premodern doesn't do that. They specifically stay in their mission statement on the website. If you have a card that's legal in the format, you're welcome to play it. You can foil out decks. You could play, uh, if it was in re- reprinted in Innistrad this year, you could do it. <laughs> None of the, There's no cards that fit that description, but like... It's all alive. Uh, people, they want you playing the format. They don't want to be exclusive, which I appreciate a lot compared to other communities that exist out there. Yeah, for sure. And even you can play, uh, even for those reserve list cards, there are very, very much more uh, cheaper uh, versions uh, with the, the gold border ones. Those are also legal as well. So if you want to play elves, but you don't want to you know, spend a bunch of money on a place of glass cradles, you can just buy those ones, which are significantly cheaper. I think that they're still fairly expensive, but, but you know, you you get like even an extra little bit of of help there that you know will allow you to play the deck that you really want to in, in a much more cheaper fashion. Yep, unsanctioned format run by the community, Wizards of the Coast. Nope, there is no house rake on this format. They just want you to play it however you can, and I love that. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's let's wrap this up. I feel like I could talk for another two hours, but this video is long <laughs> enough. Uh, Pre modern was sweet. I'm glad we got to showcase all these different decks. Like you said, every deck got to at least showcase a little bit of what it's about. And and we split the matches too. So there yes, was no it clearly, rolls. Yeah, it, it's very cool how, you know, uh, you have never played the format, yet you are apparently the master out of the by by three to two yeah. out of the two of us. So uh clearly <laughs> I need to I need to get my, my practice going, huh? Yeah, I'm gonna have to go back and watch your side of the match for our first round uh no the second round when i played terrageddon because mm-hmm. i was sure that i lost game one uh when you me like, deeded me twice <laughs> you had three bailoff or two bailoffs and a blaster in play and i had savannah lions i was like i'm dead but then i won somehow and i'm gonna have to see what happened on your side because that blew my mind no, for sure, and that it was it was just a, the three three mana eleven eleven trample had something to do with that for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's a thick boy. It's yeah. a big win. All right, well, thank you for agreeing to do this with me. This was a lot of fun. I hope to work with you again in the future. I hope to play some pre modern again in the future. Probably for my fans, I'm sorry, I'm, it's not going to become a regular thing on my channel. This was a very like special thing. I had to get another person involved. It's a lot more work than normal, uh, but. It was fun. I'm glad I got to showcase it at least this once. Uh, so Nagledak, thank you for sponsoring this project and thank you for being here.
No, it was my pleasure. Like any excuse to to play some pre modern, I I will be there. And the, yeah, I really appreciate you for giving me the opportunity. This was a fantastic time, and nobody better to I could think to to do it with with, with you. So thank you, Brian. Really appreciate it. Okay, and if you're watching on my channel, where do, where do we find you? Plug yourself. Yes. So I, I'm the, the one with the, the weird name. My name is F. Pablush. That's why everybody calls me Fran or Francisco. It's F-P-A-W-L-U-S-Z. That's my username. And you can find me on Twitch, where I stream twitch.tv slash F. Pablush. Or in YouTube, you can find me at uh, youtube.com slash F. Pablush MTG. Right. And if you're watching from one of those places, I'm Bosch and Roll. You can find me at Bosch and Roll on YouTube, Bosch and Roll on Twitter, and... I don't currently stream on Twitch, so those are the places. <laughs> Go check it out. Thank you all for watching, and once again, thanks for doing this with me, and we will see everyone down the road.